So just so say been, who you are, what your um, education is, and where do you live? Okay. Uh, my name is Karen. Uh, I graduated as a registered nurse in 1982. So that was a long time ago. Um, my graduate work is all in psychology. I'm also a psychotherapist. Um, I also taught for many years at the university. I taught um, courses in psychology, courses in development, human development. And I'm also a childbirth educator and a lactation consultant for many years, uh, almost since that, that profession started. And I have been very active uh, advocating for people since, I think since I was a nursing student, when I saw things that seemed uh, to not be uh, supportive of people. And um, I started asking questions throughout this crisis. And I want to tell the people who are listening a little bit about how we are supposed to work. First of all, we have four ethical principles that we must adhere to. Many people are aware of do no harm, but we also must respect autonomy, which means self-determination, respect for people's decisions. And of course, people can't make decisions unless they have real accurate evidence-based information. We're also supposed to do good. We don't just not do harm, we're supposed to do good. Do good, for example, in this crisis should have been giving people information about exercise, vitamins, a type of vitamins. Uh, they should have been able to find places to exercise. And I don't need to tell everyone who's listening, but I do want you to ask yourself, were you told where to go exercise? Were the parks open? Could your children climb on jungle gyms? Do you know what vitamins to take? Do you know what you should be eating? Do you know how to sleep, appropriate sleep? Do you know the signs of an early virus? Do you know? You probably don't. Do you know how to look after yourself if you have a virus? Do you know how to do relaxation if you're really stressed out? Probably not. So that's beneficence, it means we have to do good. And of course, we should not be doing harm. Now, think to yourself, are you aware of any information showing that our health officials did a risk benefit analysis of the outcomes and of the intervention? That means when they decided to do lockdown, what they should have done was integrate information about what happens to people when they lose money? What happens when we're stressed? What happens when we can't visit people we like? And we enter that information into equation, much like math, and we see if those factors are greater than or less than the outcome of the intervention. And really, we now know that we caused, not we, not these nurses here, that our health officials and those supporting them have caused harm. We're not allowed to do harm. So we must do a risk benefit analysis. And I want to do a risk benefit, a very quick risk benefit analysis about social isolation and social distancing. Ask yourself the question. Well, research, good evidence tells us that isolating people from one another causes illness. In fact, our health professionals have known that for decades. Do you think all the nurses and the physicians and people working in the hospital love having families there that much? What we have been, something that we have been facilitating for years? No, we didn't do that because we want to see everybody there. It's because we know that people get better and they don't get sicker if their families and their loved ones are there. Sorry. Touch. We know that touch is very important. Let me just turn that one off very quickly. Sorry, sorry. Um, <laughs> um, so then ask yourself, why have women been separated during birth when research for decades says we need people there so she has a good, healthy birth? Why have children been separated from one another in school? Why aren't they learning to interact with one another? And most of my research is actually on maternal infant child development. What we're doing to children is dangerous, not just the masks, 
Masks are dangerous. Another question. Somebody really wants me. Sorry about that. Sorry. Um, so we are doing all these things to people with not realizing that we should have been doing a risk benefit analysis to see the harm. I want to talk just for a minute about the vaccine as well, or Matt, sorry, one thing on about masks. Do you know that we know for decades that masks are dangerous and that's why we reduce the use in the hospital and we weren't allowed to do this all day long. If you touched your mask and you're in surgery, you had to go out and change your mask. We've got people doing this and then touching the door and it's ridiculous. The vaccine, two months trial. And the last thing I want to tell you about is how we are being asked to advertise this vaccine. Do you know that there's nurses having their pictures taken while they're getting the shot, this new vaccine? Do you know that that's advertising and that's a conflict of interest and that they're not supposed to do that? You might think back to the 60s when we had pictures of doctors smoking and advertising cigarettes. And in order to, in, to get us healthcare providers to sell this to you. We are also reading articles such as one in Medscape that described a nurse who was a volunteer and she had some what we are supposed to call adverse reaction but now you're supposed to call it an immune response and the purpose of the article was to appease the physicians and nurses so that we would appease you when you have your severe reaction. That's advertising. That's not information. Right. Yes. Thank you, Karen. Um.